Mike Schmitz of ESPN. We're here with potential number one pick, Jabari Smith out of Auburn. So we've seen you kind of doing a little bit of everything mm -hmm. all year. I mean, you're shooting 40% from three, you're guarding almost all five positions, you know, you're bringing the ball up in transition, playing out of the mid post. Like, what do you think you've been able to show? I know it's about you guys and your season and your quest for a national championship, but what do you think you've been able to show, you know, NBA teams and scouts so far this season? Um, I feel like I, I've been able to show like my defense. Um, I feel like a lot of people know I can score, I can shoot, I can stretch the floor, but I feel like my defense has has really um really stepped up and that's that's why that's the main reason I came to Auburn, you know. Their their intensity to defend and, and his emphasis on guarding all five positions was important to me. So I feel like my defense has, has shown a lot, has grown a lot. Yeah, no questions. All right, so we're going to break down some of your film here. We're okay. going to go through your go-to moves, okay. uh, you know, the your bag. The bag yeah. is deep. Yeah. You know, I think this is really one of your go-tos, right? Your back shoulder fade. Yeah. So what are you seeing and how he's guarding you that? Um, I feel like he was kind of arms linked away, so I feel like mm -hmm. I, I could attack him more. So I didn't want to settle for a jumper right there when I know I can shoot that whenever I want. So I wanted to get a little deeper and just, you know, make a more aggressive move. And then here, kind of getting to that same move, um, you know, setting this up with a little bit of the, almost like the dream shake, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, take me through this play. I feel like he was he was giving me space again. Mm -hmm. I was out kind of short. I know I probably could have shot it, but just, you know, just attacking a little bit. And, um, you know, a, kind of a taller defender, so I knew I had to get into his body a little bit to just create more space. Yeah, perfect. And then, all right, this one last night, you, you didn't knock it down, but this is part of the repertoire? Yeah, I, um, I shot one against Oklahoma too, but I missed it. But um, I feel like it's a shot that I can shoot. I just gotta make it, you know. Um, it creates a lot of space for me, like the defender's really nowhere near me. Who do you think of most when you think of this type of uh, shot, like the one-legged follow-up? Probably Dirk, yep. a lot of KD, just a lot of unicorns who shoot that shot and just create space and just use that touch. Who are your biggest influences in these type of mid-post spots? Because that's an area where so many of the best scorers in the NBA yeah. are really able to eat. Um, I would probably say like my dad mm. and just 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 playing with different different professionals, like in pickup runs and stuff like that. Like Damian Wilkins and okay. just different different professionals who know a lot, who know tricks of the trade. And just just teaching you different things, like just learning from them and just guarding it really. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just it just helps me. Yeah, but definitely really, really comfortable, you know, over either shoulder there. And then all right, face up, inside pivot, mm -hmm. jab step. Seems like that's a big part of your, kind of your package as well. Yeah. Pretty basic, you know, we're we're building it out to the more mm -hmm. advanced stuff, but uh, take me through this one. Um, I just seen his feet jump back when I jab step, mm -hmm. um, and I just knew I had the jumper, and I already had uh, scored a few before that, so I was feeling kind of good. So that's an easy one, right? Mm -hmm. Face him up, jab. We've seen you do that from three, yeah. really all over the floor. Um, all right, this one. Yeah, this is this is one where I just knew that the defender was smaller than me, mm -hmm. so I tried to pump fake and get him in the air, knowing that he'll he'll probably fly at me. And I knew how aggressive they were playing me like to start the game. Yep. So I knew that he would jump. I actually didn't know the double team was coming, but I just knew that he had jumped. So if you if you saw that, what was what's your read? Um, I probably would have passed it if, yep. if I would have seen him, but I really didn't I really didn't see him out the corner of my eyes. So how much of an emphasis has cause I would say maybe one of the only things that if you looked at like your game and the numbers and everything that a scout could like nitpick mm -hmm. is uh, like playmaking, mm -hmm. right? Like yeah. being like, and, and I think that was more a part of your game even in high school yeah. than it's been here, right? Yeah, I feel like um, passing is, is a part of my game, but I just have to have to figure out how to balance it with being aggressive and mm -hmm. being able to, you know, still playmate. Cause you know, sometimes when you get the ball in certain spots, your team is so good that you have to kind of shoot those shots. You know what I mean? Just yeah. to level out the, um, you know how many touches you're gonna get. I thought this was maybe your best passing game in Murray State. Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah, I think I had probably three assists, maybe. Something like that. And what about this one? Take me to uh, this room. I just seen Devin cut. We made our contact a little bit. Yeah. And I told him to go because this player was kind of, you know, just not a, alert. Mm hmm. And then he just <laughs> finished. Don't show. Dang, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, he's bouncy. I yeah. uh, had one yesterday, too, right? Yeah. Um, so, all right, there's, you know, playmaking out of the post a little bit. And then this one's getting to s some more advanced stuff, like we said. Uh -huh. I mean, this is pretty tough. Yeah. Take me through this one. Um, I usually spin out of it to um, to to go to go to the basket, but mm -hmm. I knew how like 
throughout the game how healthy they were like on the backside and stuff like that. So I knew I wouldn't be able to basically drive past him and finish. So I just knew I had to, you know, get him off balance with that. And I knew he was in foul trouble, so he was kind of, you know, uh, a little touchy, a little, you know, a little mental was a little messed up. Yeah, perfect. A big time shot that you see from a lot of anyone in the NBA goes um, to that move. Uh, I feel like my dad. My dad taught me it, but um, I'm sure I'm, I'm sure people do it. I haven't really seen no one particular player who just keeps doing yeah. it. Yeah, I know. I, I know some players have done it. So your dad is an OG mid post <laughs> killer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he he taught me a lot of tricks of the trade and stuff like that. So. Do you watch any Jason Tatum? Oh yeah, I watch a lot of Jason Tatum. Um, I keep working on my ball handling to get it up to where it is because he he be yeah you know he can he can really handle the ball but um. You know, I do watch a little, a lot of Jason Tatum, like in college and stuff like that. Yeah. Just to see, um, just the comparison and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I think there are some some similarities. Yeah. I even think sometimes like Kawhi with yeah. how you get to your spots, like your one dribble pulls and stuff yeah. like that of triple threat. Yeah. You like him? Yeah, Kawhi's good. I like his defense. He yeah. His like his ability to defend without fouling and get mm-hmm. stuff and stuff like that. I like that. Yeah. All right, this is where you see kind of the the veteran presence uh-huh. almost from the eighteen year old. Yeah. Um, Where'd you learn this one? That's just coming from people doing it to me. Like <laughs> yeah. Playing against professionals and, and me guarding like that, and then they just do it to me. I'd be like, it's really nothing you can do, but it's a foul. Like, I'm just trying to shoot my, I'm just trying to shoot a jumper, and you doing that, and then, you know, just learning it, and then doing it in high school. Mm-hmm. And you just find the different ways to get to the free throw line, and, you know, just find the different tricks. So, are you a guy who played a lot of like open runs, open gyms? Yeah. That's kind of how you grew up? Yeah. How much did that help you? Um, it helped me a lot just to work on stuff you're practicing and just getting in the live game speed and, and, get, and playing against people who are older than you and more mature than you, it really helps. Yeah, and, and so I think your ability to like these rip throughs, like either over or under, mm-hmm. um, allows you to be pretty, you know, deliberate, decisive with your moves, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so whether it's in the mid post or out on the perimeter, uh, what are you looking at in the defender that, you know, allows you to make this decision? Um, I just knew in, in this particular in this particular game he had already had two fouls, mm-hmm. so I was just looking to attack and maybe give him his third because you know he's a pretty good defender. Mm-hmm. So I was just trying to get him out of the game, and you know I knew he would be playing playing a little less aggressive because of his foul trouble. So I knew I could probably rip and get downhill. Yeah, that's great. And then one dribble, get in the front of the rim, finish him with the left, smooth. All right. So then we've seen kind of the low rip, uh-huh. now the high rip, right? So what is it's, it's where his hand is? Um, is that what you're reading, or I feel like it de- it depends on kind of the hand, mm-hmm. but also like the player kind of. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Tatar is a pretty good defender, so me just trying to you know um, get downhill quicker. I feel like I get go quicker over the top than going low. So who are some of the best high release shooters? Um, you gotta say KD. Yeah. You gotta say um, uh, Kawhi has a, has a really high release. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say Melo has a yep. really high release. Yeah. Um, I feel like LeBron has developed it a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. As he's gotten older and as he's um, mature, and um, there's some more, some more players out there, but I probably can't think of them off the top of my head. Yeah, LeBron's mid post is yeah has improved a lot throughout his career. So kind of like we talked about earlier, just being able to like rise over top, yeah. square your body like that. Uh-huh. Like you're not a guy who needs to be just like completely set to make shots, right? Yeah. Um, I feel like it's just when I get it, get it up to that point. I mm-hmm. feel like it's just all my wrist and all my touch. Mm-hmm. So um, I just knew he was he was way smaller than me, and I probably wasn't gonna be able to beat him off the dribble at that spot with all of the bodies around me. Mm-hmm. So I just knew I had to, you know, raise up. Yeah, watching you pregame, I mean, you you have a very like professional uh-huh. approach. Like you go hard. You're full sweat, um, you know, like not every 18-year-old is like that. What, yeah. what goes into that? Um, you know, just getting, getting yourself ready to play. I feel like I figured that out, you know, in high school. Mm-hmm. Um, my dad telling me, like, you need to be sweating. But in high school, you only get 15 minutes to warm up. So yeah. I used to, in high school, I didn't even touch a basketball. I used to just go over there and just run back and forth. And then I might shoot, like, two, two shots at every spot and then just be ready to play. Um, I feel like it's not necessarily getting your jumper warm and then like that. I feel like it's just getting your, your body ready to play. So that's what I'd be focusing on, like going full speed and really yep. getting that second. You should have that second win when the game starts. So, all right, we talked about some of the mid-post stuff, right? And we've seen you bring the ball up a little bit too. How much has your ball handling evolved throughout um, your career and where do you think you can get to? Um, I feel like it's evolved a lot. Um, I, I was forced to handle the ball a lot in high school, so it's nothing It's nothing major to me, but having a great, great guard is not really – I don't really have to do it that much, mm-hmm. but um, 
you know, I feel like it could evolve a lot with me being able to create shots for myself and create more space. But um, I just feel like right now it's a good tool to just, you know, relieve pressure off the guards, you mm -hmm. know, bring the ball up, still be able to play make, and um, sometimes drive around defenders with them worrying about uh, my jump shots. Yeah, you've been like a safety outlet almost for your guards too, yeah. right, against some presses and stuff like that. But here, yeah, you're looking really comfortable, handling the ball, sitting down, getting low. Has that been a big part? Yeah, that was something I worked on during the summer, you know, just staying low, being able to play against guards that are smaller than you because people mm -hmm. try to usually put smaller, quicker people on me. So that's how I just try to play against them. But, yeah, it seems like the right-to-left cross is something you're pretty comfortable with yeah. too, right? We've seen you, you know, get to the rim. You remember this play? Um, is it a turnover? Yeah. Yeah, I tried to, I tried to go right. And then he cut me off, and then the whole team ended up coming at me. <laughs> I had KD. I ended up watching this already. I had KD in the in the, in the corner. corner. Yeah, but I couldn't see him with the with the. Um, I could have been stronger with it. I had held it a little longer. But. I, I think this is when you're when you're at your best. When you're pushing with pace, you're making these type of kickouts, yeah. right? Yeah, that was a pre that was a press we worked on all week. That with that UCF press and just you know knowing that they'll go double the guard and, and the teams usually force. The four men they have to make plays like that, but they haven't really played no four men like who can who can make plays like that. Like so, yourself? Yeah. <laughs> Is that why you're left? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that, and it's a basic read a lot of the times, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. it doesn't have to be some like LeBron, no look like yeah. I, I think with your ability to score the ball, you know, you're going to have those those basic reads. Um, and then this is kind of new, you, something you've been showing a little more of too. Yeah. I mean, um, that's <laughs> that's tough. Um, that was just, I was I was feeling really good that game. That was probably like, well, that was the second game of the season. Yep. And um, I was just finding my finding my rhythm and um, just finding different ways to score and just adjust to the college game. So No doubt. Um, and then this one, too, so kind of like a play off of that, right? So uh -huh. you see the a lot of guys with the pull-up and then to kind of hezzy off uh -huh. of it. Uh, take me through this one. Um, I tried to rip and, and, and draw the foul because I knew we were in the bonus. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, they, they ended up didn't calling it, so I just tried to attack, just keep attacking, because I think he was in foul trouble this game too, so just keep trying to attack him. All right, and then this is when, when we started to see stuff like this, that's when it was kind of like, okay, like this is yeah. this is a different level. Uh -huh. um, so what is this action? Is this supposed to string, spring you for an open three? Or? Yeah, he's supposed to come pin down and just let me play out of it. Okay. Um, and I just knew the defender was was really small, and he was real, real low, real down to the ground, so driving around him probably wouldn't be my best mm -hmm. idea with him sitting in the gap over there too so I just decided to raise up and, and do something I know he can't defend so and then so now I right, like we're talking about like the progression of this right now if you have that uh -huh. they kind of bite on it you get downhill yeah he was a little taller um, I feel like I, I could attack him a little bit more mm -hmm. so um just getting getting by him taking that bump and just going to finish yeah big time move yeah. um and as you continue to get lower too, all that, like you can be really, really tough to guard. Mm -hmm. All right, and then, so those are kind of like the go-tos, right? Yeah. Like, you know, when the ball's yeah. in your hands, really good at a, at a triple threat with the jabs, the, mm -hmm. the turnarounds, you know, all that, the, the hesitation pull-ups. Um, but like, you might come in right away and play off the ball, right? Yeah. You yeah. might be alongside a guy who can really score the ball. And I think one of your best like value adds is you can really catch oh. and shoot. Yeah. Um, okay, so here, Transition, you just got the steal right, step into the three, huge shot. Sorry, break break down your mechanics for me here. Making sure my hand is not on the top of the ball. Yeah. Um, making sure the ball's on my fingertips, making sure I got a good base. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to work on not letting my knees come in so much when I shoot. Yeah, and you and you shoot it from NBA three pretty comfortably, yeah, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I usually work on um, in warm-ups, just get, get in my touch from that range and just – you know, just getting loose. And it forces you to tighten yeah. your mechanics too, yeah, right? Yeah, definitely. Because you can't have as much room for error. But yeah, so all right, playing off the catch, mm -hmm. we know you can catch and shoot. And then they got to run you off kind of right, close yeah. out harder. Just felt when I, when I put it down that he, he ended up playing good defense and really overplayed it. So I just stopped and pulled up. Yeah, that's a big time shot. And so, all right, so you got the catch and shoot. You got the mid-range pull up if he runs you off. Now it's about some of this playmaking too, right? Yeah. You remember this play? Yeah, I remember he, he played. He played good defense. I probably, I seen how how he uh, went up to go get it. I, I probably, he probably was gonna block that one. So um, I tried to drop it off to Al, I think, or tried to finish, or I don't even know what I did. <laughs> so looking at it now, good defense. what are your options, right? Because you got the help coming at the rim. Um, He's I on got your hip. Kessler over there. Mm -hmm. um, and if he fades to the corner, it's probably yeah. an easier pass, right? Yeah. So one of the things that, because I think a big part of what makes you so successful is like when you can catch and, uh -huh. and get into kind of your rhythm, yeah. you're really, really successful. I like the aggressiveness here, because maybe early in the, in the season, maybe you're settling, right? Yeah. 
and then just, try, try to put them on a poster, huh? <laughs> yeah, try to. Um, I, I love that. I seen the help coming over, and I knew I was going on one leg, so I had to try to go up strong and didn't want to go up soft and then like that. So That's a big-time drive, man. Yeah. That's, that's what you see from NBA All-Stars. And then, you know, this is what I'm talking about, right? He's going to close out hard. All right, two dribbles to the rim. Yeah. Read, react, quick. Like, that's – with your shooting, that's going to be open a lot. All right, so defensively, I mean, I think this is where you have a chance to be uh -huh. special. Like, yeah. Like – like all defense yeah. type. Do you feel that way? Yeah, this is this is the side of the ball that's fun. Yeah. Playing with Auburn, just knowing how, how well we defend and how much fun we have defending. Um, it's just it's just fun. So your activity here, like uh -huh. that's what always stands out to me. Like yeah. hands, feet, everything. Um, are you are you a talker too or, or what's going on? Um, sometimes. <laughs> if yeah. you get me to that point, but I'm not <laughs> really gonna talk to you on grind. I'm just gonna try to try to stop you. I might talk after. But um you know, Shackelford was kind of hot, mm -hmm. so he, so I knew had to take away the three and force him to drive. Mm -hmm. and I knew he was going left, so I kind of jumped on the left hand, but he ended up making a good move. But and I ended up getting back in front, knowing that Dylan was right there, mm -hmm. and just um, going to make a play on the ball. Yeah, quick hands, right? Yeah. So hips are opened up, but you're yeah. still able to recover. And then I think so much of it is just like, <laughs> I love that, man. Yeah. Just the tenacity you're playing with, the feet, the hands. Is that just a stare? You, yeah. What do you got? Oh, uh, I'm just, you know, I was just having fun with him. Yeah. Know, two minutes left. We kind of yep. sealed the win. And, you know, they was talking a little earlier. So, you know, just talking a little bit. No, it's great. And, and just making them feel you, right? Yeah. And so most of this stuff later on is from last night's game. But mm -hmm. just to show whether it's Shackelford, whether it's a guy like J.D. Davison, uh, you know, you can guard point guards pretty comfortably, right? Yeah, I'm just telling my team that don't overhelp. Um, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't need too much help. I can guard them to the rim. Um, and I seen that was kind of like trying to ISO me and stuff like that. So I knew he was he was probably right hand dominant. So mm -hmm. just jumped on the right hand, and then he didn't really have nothing after that. Who are you most looking forward to defending at the um, next level? At the next level, uh, I really just I, anybody. You can name a lot of people. Like a lot of people are just so. So talented and just so hard to defend. Like like I said, like Chris Middleton. Mm -hmm. um, like you can say anybody like Paul George. You can even say a veteran like Melo. You can say anybody who just who just can score. Like you can say anybody. You can say somebody tall like Devin Booker, I would say. Mm -hmm. Or just just anybody. You know, I'd be excited to guard anybody really. I really wouldn't matter about a specific person. So do you feel like you, you want to be the guy who guards the other team's best perimeter player? Um, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Especially to guard the guys who play out in the mid post. Mm -hmm. And um, as I get stronger, I feel like I'll be really good at that. Yeah, no question. With your frame, your length, yeah. your quickness, um, all that. So this is impressive too. So some of this is scouting report, right? Yeah. Because who is that? Oh, uh, that's Gary. He likes to, uh, to back cut a lot. Mm -hmm. And not a great shooter, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can gap this hand off? Um, yeah. Um, I know he. I could just play under, and I know I got Walker with the support. And um, I know he was going right. I probably could have took a charge when he right, right when he came off, right there. But um, I know last game I tried to do it. They didn't call it, so I just yeah, yeah. You're thinking to, about tried it. Tried to stay solid. And then here, I know they called the foul on this one, but yeah, I tried probably should have stayed down and tried to sprint and beat him to the spot because I kind of thrusted my hips. Okay. Trying to get back in front. Mm -hmm. But um. I feel like he didn't have nothing, but I tried to, I tried to get back in front. He, they, they, it was a good call. I mean, I fouled him. Yeah, pretty good defense. Yeah. And, all right, so off the ball, this is maybe where there's been a um, little bit of an, an adjustment, right? Uh, yeah, um, uh, I've been I've been trying to be more of an off ball defender, but mm -hmm. you know, like in high school, I was probably the tallest player, so I would go contest more shots, block more shots. But when you play somebody playing with somebody like Walker, you'd be like, yeah. should I go or is he just gonna <laughs> block it? So just trying to find that balance, and you know. Not trying to send two people trying to go block a shot. So, so anything you would have done differently here? Um, I feel like I seen Walker trailing. Yeah, yeah. So I just wanted to. I <laughs> kind of let way. him go. Kind of let him go by me to just know what Walker gonna do with that when you try to go up. So just, you know, just playing kind of smart. Yeah, and, and we've seen you doing this more. Mm -hmm. You know, like timing blocks at the rim. Yeah. Um, fingertip got that, huh? Yeah, uh, I had just turned the ball over. I thought he was gonna try to dunk it, but uh, I, I I couldn't let him dunk on me. I had to make a play, make up for my turnover. Do you study any like guys who are really good at verticality, going up vertical, letting um, them go into your body? Uh, I like how LeBron really attacks the ball, like when he tries mm -hmm. to go block shots. He's not necessarily jumping into your body, but he's really trying to go find the ball and just mm -hmm. um, just make a play on the ball and defend without fouling. So, so being able to, you know, guard on the perimeter, being able to make plays off the ball, being able to rebound your position. Yeah. I mean, what is what is the ceiling for Jabari Smith? Um, I feel like it's it's a, the ceiling's very high. I feel like my potential to guard one through five efficiently. Um, just being able to space the floor and just 
being able to play so many different roles on the team, like if you need me to stand in the corner and shoot, I'll do that. Just play defense and shoot, I'll do that. If you need me to need me to make a play, I'll do that. If you need me to do anything, I feel like I can just um, do so many assets and so many just affect the game in so many ways. That's my main goal, you know. I don't want to be labeled as one thing. I want to mm -hmm. just keep expanding, expanding. So that's my that's what I'd be focusing on. Are you the best prospect in the country? Um, I feel like I am. Yeah, I feel like I am. If you were telling an NBA NBA GM going mm -hmm. out to dinner and explaining mm -hmm. why, what would you say? Um, I would just say my unselfishness. Um, my my um, my focus on winning. I don't mm -hmm. really care about stats or nothing like that. I just really focus on winning and just getting better. You know, I don't really get complacent. I'm a hard worker, um, and I'm just going. I'm just going to do whatever you need me to do. I'm not going to try to do nothing I can't do or just play out of my role. So you know, just just that and just my potential and my and my work ethic. I feel like my ceiling and I have no choice but to be high. ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content. Subscribe to ESPN Plus right now.